What's up, everybody? My name is Rob Savage, and we're here again with another episode of 600 Seconds with Hollow Art. And today's guest, we have... John Storino, otherwise known as Sildag. Y'all give it up for Sildag. That's right. Thank you. How you doing, Mr. I, I'm doing Storino? good. I'm doing good. I, I, I want to thank everyone here for making this possible here at, here at my house and... You know, got Hilo Art, and and you and you, man. I, I couldn't interview you. You you got a lot of things going on over here, so I, pre- I appreciate the time you're taking to, you know, help me and interview me. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. We appreciate you. Um, so won't you let the people know what it is that you do? Say again. You know, you're a poet. Yes, I'm a poet. Let the people know everything that you do. I know you 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 know. All right, you yeah. go, my bad. You gotta speak up a little bit. More. You know, I, I'm old guard. My my, you know, I, I've been to too many shows. You, I don't need your library voice. Right. <laughs> so my bad, my bad. <laughs> Seal Dag, let the people know what it is that you do. There you go. I got, got all right, all right. Now. Well, I want to thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, I am a poet. I'm also a photographer. Um, I haven't gotten back into producing shows because uh, I have produced shows uh, in my 15 years uh, being on the scene and whatnot. My first open mic is named Phoenix Tongue, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my shirt later. It's Phoenix Project, and so, but, you know, um, I got four books of poetry, and also have a brand new CD and uh, entitled For the Loved Ones, and, you know, so... I know we don't have a whole lot of time, so I can no, no, go no. on and on. So it's no. all good. It's all <laughs> you're good. You're fine. You're fine. Um, so how did you get started with poetry? How did I, um, well, thank you for that. Um, this I, I did some poetry in college when I was in college, and and then you know times change, things change. I I, I really don't have any of the, any of that poetry from that time, but uh, within the past 15, 16 years. Uh, I, I developed a certain style of poetry, and I happened to be a caregiver to my parents for the last three years of time on our planet, and so I shared stories within my books, um, Onion Season Part 1, Onion Season Part 2, and at, at the same time, you know, just, just you know, I would get more stories from other caregivers about their folks and like like that, so... So that, that that's how it you know how it started. You know, my my parents uh, this past f- Sunday actually, uh, 17 years to the day of my father's passing. Um, it was on a Sunday in 2004, and this was July 18, 2000. You know, right. 21 right now. So yeah. My condolences. Thank you. Um, what is the name Sildag? I know Sildag is Silver Dagger. Right. Where did right. you get that name from? Um, I am a uh, fantasy Dungeons and Dragons uh, kind of person that likes likes to read. And when um, Catherine Kerr is the, the the writer in particular, when she did the Devry series, um, there there was a group of people that were mercenaries in her books, and I took the name Silver Dagger. These were the heroes throughout the books, but but they were also the ones that were shamed. And so, you know, being a group of people that were looked down upon, actually the ones throughout the whole series of books, you know, they're the heroes. So I I took it from that group, Silver Daggers, and I changed it to Sil Dag, capital S-I-L, capital D-A-G, put together, and that became my... My poetry slam. Right. So you feel like you could relate to the, the heroes that have been shamed, kind of? Is that what you mean? Well, we all need to look at heroes, right? I mean, we, we try to. I mean, I, I know there's some villains in the house. I know that's true. We all, we all got, you know, we got to have a little villainous side. Uh, that's for sure. But, you know, you know th- thinking about being a hero or something like that. So, yeah. Okay. Um, tell us about your book, Full Circle. Full Circle, the book? Uh, my, my book, um... I'm sorry, they're only spoons? I'm sorry, what? It says full circle. Did you have- oh, full, um, full circle. Full circle is my fourth book of poetry. Um, the story basically is dedicated to my wife. And, and, and the thing is, is um, I had, I, I, it seems like I, I have certain events that have happened throughout my life. Um, 
I'm going to talk about something that's pretty serious right now. Uh, I don't know how, how many of you have a, a plan if a fire erupted in your home. So the thing is, it's best to have a plan because our family woke up to a fire in our den. And there were three people living in the house, and unfortunately, uh, we got separated. And my daughter and myself were able to survive, and my wife passed away from smoke inhalation. So, Sorry to hear that, man. So, so yeah, thank you. So I basically um, wrote the book with her in mind and also trying to encompass what it is to grieve, the grieving process. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, thank Some you. heavy stuff, man. It, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's... it's it's good that you could take something so painful and turn it into something positive for other people to um, use their own, you know, use in their own lives. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. The, 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 it wasn't, you know, I, I'm thankful. I, I want to shout out to this community here in Columbia, South Carolina, because the, the artist community, the, the music scene, the different poets, um, they really help support you know, did they, what they could to support. Also my church, I'm a Unitarian Universalist, and, and my, my church came forward, and, and that, that helped to be a safety net, basically, for me and my family, my, my daughter and my son, because it's, you know, it's difficult to, for a family to bury the child, but it's also difficult when someone in the family prematurely dies too at the same time. So, so you know, I, I, there's so many people I, I, can, I could thank, but I just want to thank the whole community in particular. So thank you. We appreciate that. We appreciate you. Um, we're going to do a quick word association, all right? I'm going to say a word or a phrase, and you tell me what, what it means to you, okay? So the first word we have is onion season, onion season part one. Onion season part one, yeah, it uh, came out in 2012. It's a collection of stories. Um, I am a Dietilus Mortis poet. So, so many of these stories come my way. And, you know, I have different poems from my, my parents and other people too. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's a reflection of my art. That's my art. So thank you. Okay. And um, touring. Touring, like going on tour. I'm sorry? Go, like touring, like going on tour? Touring? Touring? Yes. Tour. Oh, touring, my bad, my <laughs> no, bad. No, I'm sorry. It's the mess, I know. I, I know, I know. It's all good. No, it's my ears more than anything, so I'm not, I'm not going to name, name the club I used to go to. I lost my hearing, but anyways. Um, I hope to do some touring soon. Um, I get to, let, let me do a quick shout out. I know it's ahead of time. But uh, I'm a member of the upstate Greenville, South Carolina slam team. And, and I hope to get out to Wits End Poetry uh, up in Greenville sometime you know, in the near future. So uh, I was hoping to see Moody Black when he was going to be here. That's my slam master. So oh, hopefully the, you know, he'll reschedule and, and then um, you know, it would be good to see him again. Okay, um, now we're going to do a quick question for the audi from the audience. We're gonna ask, somebody in the audience is going to come up and ask you a question. Okay. All right. All right, we're getting ready to ask a quick question from the audience. How you doing, man? All right, I'm good. How y'all doing? I'm, we're doing good. What's your name? Uh, Chris, but I go by C2. C2, oh, right. baby. All right, okay, nice to meet you. Uh, you got a question for us? Uh, yeah, so, John, uh, what is your inspiration in writing They Are Only Spoons? What was your inspiration? All right, all right. Um, the inspiration for they, they Are Only Spoons. They Are Only Spoons? Yeah, what's your inspiration for that? They Are Only Spoons is, is in a sense, an anthology of, of, of poetry. Um, it, it's this collection of 12 to 15 years of, of poetry. And I've, I've got, uh, one, one of the things I, I was able to take part in, it's a program they have at the Columbia Museum of Art. They don't have this program anymore. It's called Free Song. And we're a poet and or musician does a piece to a work of art. It used to be once a month, the first Friday of every month, if I remember. And I, I was invited twice in order to do that. So in my book, 
and uh, they are only spoons. I have a, uh, some of those poems that I have and have some comedic pieces. I have some of my lighter work too. I mean, can, can't always keep writing about death or you know things, you know, something of that nature. So, but um, you know, I that, that that was the main thing. The you know, basically uh, in in full circle, which is the cover that I have right here. Uh, I, I got some help with this this one, but basically too, this is a behind here is a photograph that I have, and I. Uh, on my other three books, I have photographs. I developed the photographs for the covers uh, of each of my books. Okay, okay. Nice. You want to show the other one as well? Or? Excuse me. I said you want to show the other cover as well. The um. No, no. This is a different book here. Oh, gotcha. Uh, gotcha, I, gotcha. You know, I, I, I was jumping. Ahead. I prepared something here. Oh, Just gotcha. you know, I, I, I'm waiting for a certain question. Okay. My bad. <laughs> I did my homework. I listened to some interviews. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, do you have any upcoming events or projects? Any upcoming events? Well, the big event that I have coming up, um, Greg Sword, the Celestial Viking, has a fun day Sunday. And Sunday happens to, September 12th happens to be on a Sunday. So Phoenix Tongue is taking over Sunday Fun Day, or Fun Day Sunday. And it's also my birthday show. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you want to take a guess how young I'm going to be? No, I'm going to guess, no, you tell me, you tell me. I, all right, I will. I, you know, I'm going to be 70. 70? Yeah. Wow, hey, I'll give it up for 70, man. Thank you, thank you. And I figure it's like, well, I, I want to bring my brand out. I, I, I want to have, uh, actually, a gentleman in the back is going to be one of the features. The Dubbers are one of the features. Ryan Roots uh, from Asheville is going to be one of the features. And a poet that recently moved to... Uh, Georgia, and but she goes by the, the poet name is Chimera, will also be one of the features. So I hope to hope that many people from the Phoenix Tongue era will come out and we'll have a good time together and do a little drop in, have some open mic too. But we're also going to have an event and a show too at the same time. So thank you. Okay, okay, that's great. Um, a little bit off of business. What's your favorite comedy movie of all time? Man, can I change that question on you? Sure, go ahead. No, well, the the thing is, is you know, I the 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 one thing that made an impression upon me back in the day is the movie Matrix. Matrix. And, and I, I, you know, when when I when I talk about about things, it's not necessarily about a con. I don't really get into watching comedies that much. Yeah. If I'm gonna watch comedy, I'm gonna see live comedy. You know, the, you know, there's different shows in town and like like that. and want to do that. But watching TV, okay. but the movie Matrix, when it came out, I, it was like it, yeah. it, it was it's such an amazing kind of kind of story and Classic. things like that. So it was like I could, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw that movie when I was like the perfect age. I was like nine or eight or something like that. And I I loved it, man. I, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, the whole bullet time and everything with, and how, you know, certain things. And the thing is that that movie doesn't age. Even this day, you know, it came out. Still relevant. In like 98, 99, around there. And that's, I'm talking about the first one, naturally. But, you know, the other thing, too, is it's, a, it's, a, it's another survive, not a survivor. It's, it's another martyrdom story. Someone has to die for other people to live. And, <sighs> Man, it's that's that's difficult. I mean, you know, so but, you know, but it happens, you know. I, you know, you know, they made three of them. Hopefully, they're all mini millionaires and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all good. So thank um, you. Thank what, you. What about music? What's on your music playlist? Like, what are you listening to these days? Um, music. Um, my music. Well, things. I do karaoke. Look, look at me. I'm telling you, I'm gonna be 70 in about two months. And yeah, I do karaoke. Shout out to Care Rock Entertainment. And and it's just I, I you know I mean I, I do your Billy Joel or Frank Sinatra but you know I get into heavy metal and and the, one one of the things Corey Davis is one of those people that really knows a little secret about me I'm into electronica I like trance electronica and you know so so I, I'm waiting for another question unless that's a question you're going to ask. What's that? What question exactly? Well, something about day music and night music. Oh, you wanted the playlist question. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, 
Um, give me a two-song playlist. A song for the day that you're listening to and a song at night that you're taking home to. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick a day one since I talked about a little bit about modern electronica or techno or something like that. I'm going to do, for the morning, I'm going to do Dua, Dua Lipa levitating. Really? You listen to Dua Lipa? That's how you say it? Dua Lipa? Yeah, the levitating. Yeah, yeah. Okay. well, the thing is, is uh, I'm on a 10,000 steps a day program. So while I'm doing my, my, my walking, jogging, whatever I'm doing, I got my headphones on, and it's got a beat that, you know, it just keeps me focused and I'm maintaining, you know, get my steps in. So, okay. so on, the, on the nighttime, well, we're talking nighttime, I'm going Tiesto, Post Malone, Jackie Chan. Post Malone. <laughs> Yeah, listen you heard it. Jackie Chan, right? I haven't heard it. You haven't heard that one. No, uh, you gotta pick. You gotta, you gotta listen to that one. Yeah, there. yeah. I'm glad you put me on to something new today. So well, Kelly Rowland might be my destiny too, for all I know. So <laughs> there you <Wow>. go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, what advice do you have for anybody that's watching right now? They may be going through something. Um, let's see now. Well, I gotta give a shout out to my brother in arms, uh, the Dubber over here, and. Um, and uh, I, I want to thank the different musicians and other people I haven't seen. I'm looking to see a few of them this weekend. And right, right now, it's like, well, naturally, a shout out to High Low Art and my in my house. Appreciate I wanna, it. I wanna, thank you. You know, hey, make sure you get out here. The food's good out here. Come on now. All right. Um, how can people follow and support you? Um, basically, I'm on Facebook. I'm, I'm OG. So I, I just want to deal with Facebook. I, I, I don't you know, Instagram, I'm not on Instagram, any of the other, any of the platforms. And basically, you know, just, just, you know, follow me, find, find me when I'm doing karaoke. I usually have some product on me. And like I said, please come out to September 12th birthday party at Uncle Fester. So appreciate it. Hey, thank you. We appreciate you. Y'all give it up for Seal Dag. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, the first poem I'm going to do for you today is my poem for Food Not Bombs. It's entitled To Walk In. To walk in these shoes, cube at the table, Finley part stage, shirt, two sweaters, jacket, for ones not carry a duffel bag for belongings, a paper plate in hand, a styro cup, some ham, some macaroni and cheese, the cup for the soup that will keep one warm for a short while, satisfy one's gnaw, to know that the served and the server are just reflections of a mirror. Life, fortune, faith in one's time, baseball cap brim. Keep the sun to fleck from eyes. One has arms and legs to reach and walk, a mouth to speak, though too ashamed to ask. One knows what side of the table one is on. One to know that this one has walked in these shoes. Know that this one may still walk in these shoes. One is not a beggar that grasps for handout. One is a man, woman, child that found oneself here. No crime in a testimony that is one's life today. Wishes for is the hope for one's future. Let it be said I come here not to relieve myself that I'm this side of the table. Think that I am better than you. Just know that today I walk in my shoes. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, for my second poem that I'm going to do is from my book, Full Circle. And it's not a poem I do very often, but you know, I, I got to a point after the event that I'm going to talk about that I'm wondering about why there's so many guns out in the United States. Uh, many, many of you may remember about nine years ago, this event happened in Colorado. It's entitled Centennial, a mantra. In the name of a town James A. Mitchner used as a backdrop for his novel, there is housed a man now hated by many. Outside of the prison wall, he is incarcerated within a lone Blackfoot daisy rises, with petals missing, signifying loss of one's love me not, for their demise is complete. Now, still an alleged mass murderer, he waits, and we wait too. There will not ever be an answer that will satisfy everyone as to why. All I know is that the sun will rise in the east and set in the west. Wounds will take a long time to heal. Vengeance is on the mind of many people. 
Our justice system will pedantically move forward, crawling. And a man will awake with his thoughts each day as the sun rises, alone in a prison cell, possibly numbing himself into believing that this was all a game, wished to do no harm. Video games and their characterizations do not kill people. Was he thinking he is some cartoon character waiting for Batman to jump out of the movie screen and save these people? Arnold Schwarzenegger did it in the movie. Did his grasp on reality loosen so much that the bombs are not real? The bullets are not real. He is not real and a hero will stop him. All I know is that I am alive. There are multitudes of people in the world alive and one lone man in a prison cell will awake like all of us when the sun rises in the east and sets in the west with a lone blackfoot daisy stretching for sunlight blinking his eyes because there is a light on at all times in his cell chewing his food wondering what went wrong locked up batman did not stop him and we wake up too some to the sound of starling's raspy cry there may be a long hawk in the sky Buses filled with people going to work. Some read a newspaper calling this young man berserk. And we, for the most part, finish our day in our home while he sits, lays down on his bunk in a cell, watched and alone. Some on Sunday meet to attend church. All that at that time, many answers are searched for. The why may never be known. All we know is that the sun rises in the east and sets in the West every day as we live on. That's that poem, thank you very much. And for my third piece, which I mentioned, this is Full Circle, dedicated to my wife. And this also is the last track, the final track on my For the Loved One CD. And this one's from my wife. This is titled Scared of Heights. When we wake up in the morning of our day, oh, you know the me, myself, and I, not that I have the other disorder. I'm a writer. I know many characters. There's this one which I sense is there out in the dark and shadow play. Maybe the voice of life that says not good enough. You know it should have been you or the section of disc or the hard drive of life corrupted by a virus never used anymore. Can I get a bypass? Is a blockage I need a stint around? I don't know. Wake up from dreams, from memory play. Wonder whether I'll ever love again. Find love desirable now. And will she find me? And like you know any son of a bitch teenager ask, is she pretty or is she a Valkyrie? Life is the counter voice. I have much more consternation to brood upon. The voice that is my whore berates me with this dance of fire against an empty field of questions. Why did I act on the first impulse? Would I have acted on another mistake, which I don't wish to act on now? Why did I not get us all out? Separation anxiety is a time so palpable. May I get a touch of hand or mind to remind me that I'm alive? Feel the words that lurk in the darkness of my dreams. Under the precipice I stand upon. How come it's me, me standing here today, where Quirk of Fate got me out of the house fire and Maria didn't? Would you please wrap your arms around me so I know I'm not dreaming. This being a lie shit is hard word. Now you see me every day making the best of it on top of precipice, talking into the abyss. Wrap your arms around me. Pull me back. Not going to follow her. You know I'm scared of heights. Please. I want to thank everyone here. Hilo Art, my house. That, that wraps me up. Thank you very much for the time here. Thank you much.